What's up nerds, welcome back to The Raging Rainbow. My name is Dylan, doing a comic book review today for Young Squadron number one from Marvel Comics. Another tie-in to the ridiculous Heroes Reborn storyline. But in this issue, we actually get a pretty good story for once. Okay, so like I said, I don't actually hate the story that's told in here. Again, I just hate the fact that it's a tie-in to a ridiculous storyline, and none of this is ultimately going to end up meaning very much of anything. But anyway, we start out and we're introduced to the team, which as you can see, are familiar characters who have all been put in different personas. So we have Miles Morales down there in the guise of Falcon, Sam Alexander as Kid Spectrum, and Kamala Khan as Girl Power. So... We kind of get introduced to their like whole thing. And like I said, if this were just like a brand new like series or whatever, this would be the perfect way to just kick off a brand new storyline. So we kind of get introduced to each character. They get a one page little like breakdown of how they got their well, not really one page, it's like what, two, three pages for how he got his powers. And so we see this whole thing where he was on like a school trip. They got attacked by what was it, Modak? And then Dr. Spectrum shows up, but he kind of gets knocked out for a second. So Sam goes and grabs his prism, which imbues him with a portion of power. So he uses that to like attack Modak. And then Dr. Spectrum basically ends up telling him like, okay, you know what? I'll let you be my sidekick or whatever. So he kind of fights alongside him a little bit. And then we go from there to Kamala's storyline where she was like in a library or something or a museum. And then she found out that like the curator was selling off like utopian relics. And so she decided to go and like post on Power Princess's uh, like website or whatever. And she does like make mention there. She's like, I don't know if Power Princess actually checks her official website or not, but I have to try to do something. So all of a sudden she goes looking through the box and then she finds some of the relics that actually imbue her with talent and strength and everything. So she uses that to kind of like beat them before Power Princess can show up. So she ends up trying to like apologize and says, you know, I wasn't trying to steal this stuff or whatever, to which she's like, oh, it's OK. Like, I don't detect any malice in you, just bravery. So apparently she gives her the name of girl power and again, kind of like fights alongside her. And then we get to the last one, which is Miles Morales, who basically grew up wanting to be like Nighthawk and Falcon, who are supposed to be like the Batman and Robin here. Get it? So he grew up wanting to be like them. So he worked on like being a tech whiz and all that crap. And then he grows up and then he ends up seeing that like the original Falcon ends up dying. And then and they even play it up very much like the way that um, Jason Todd died when it says uh, Nighthawk's partner Falcon was slain by this psychopathic villain who calls himself the Goblin. <laughs> So anyway, like he goes on and he kind of makes his own little suit or whatever. And then he shows up one day to help Nighthawk, who's fighting the Scorpions. So he helps him to subdue them and expects him to kind of like want him to be his partner. But no, instead, he's like, what did you think you were doing? Like, this isn't some kid show or whatever. He was like, you don't know the first thing about uh, this life. If I see you in that costume again, I'll tear it apart and throw a dump you in juvenile detention. So then. <laughs> We see here it says, Miles was shocked at Nighthawk's reaction, but deep down he knew his ankle fringe was, I, I mean, uh, he says his idol didn't mean those harsh words. So, and he ends up like linking up with the others. He ends up like tracking down the other two and tells them, yeah, we should all team up or whatever to fight crime and all that crap. So they end up doing that. They come together and then we get this okay for like fight scene between them and the wrecking crew which i guess the wrecking crew in this universe is just normal like we've always known them apparently that they're like one of the only teams in this universe that developed just naturally the way that it did in the normal marvel universe but anyway that seems to be consistent across any type of timeline or whatever so they come they're like fighting against them and they manage to like take them all down and then all of a sudden there's this like smoke bomb that comes in and they're all kind of confused like what the hell's going on like we thought we took them all out well no because all of a sudden we get deadpool jumping out with this like harley quinn hammer i guess 
And so he proceeds to start like beating up on them and they're trying to like fight back, but it doesn't really do much. And then like the gas is kind of like, well, he knocks out, who is it? He knocks out. He takes down. Yeah. Kid spectrum, I guess. No, he takes Falcon takes off with him. And then, um, pow- girl power does this thing where she like claps her hands together to get rid of the smoke. And then she realizes, Oh, Falcon's gone. So her and kid spectrum ex- end up on the roof and they're trying to figure out like where would they have gone what are we gonna do and then they figure out like okay yeah we think we know more or less what we can do from here so they go to this guy rick jones they go to rick jones who is still known as the whisperer here but he's just a famous superhero blogger so not like you know the tech type of thing that we see from the regular rick jones and the regular marvel continuity he's just a blogger here so they're saying that he knows something and then she says, you know, you're going to tell me exactly how you've been tracking us all over town. And he's like, that's a trade secret. I'm part of the free press. You can't barge in here and make demands. So Kid Spectrum's like, I bet I could short out every one of these with a snap of my fingers. So he's like, you know, that's not cool or whatever. And then they end up finding out that he's taken him here to this like roller coaster or whatever. And he's basically telling him that, you know, I am here to like ensure balance or whatever. And he says, I'm fulfilling a promise. A long time ago, the powers that be declared dead is dead. Unless you have a healing factor or other pre-approved way of circumventing the finality of fate. So he's basically kind of like poking at that whole trope of like comic books that, you know, dead is never actually dead. But a long time ago, dead used to mean dead. So he's saying here, the Falcon is dead. You are the Falcon. Ergo, I must kill you. And so he's like telling him like, you know, you're crazy. I'm not that Falcon. He's like, oh, yeah, I know. Because that Falcon was killed by my best friend, the Goblin or whatever. He's like, that that's why I have to kill you to make sure that the Falcon is still dead. So he's telling him, uh, you know, the name has been retired. It's in the who's who official handbook of the dead and everything. Again, poking at DC because DC used to have who's who in the DC universe. That was like an actual series where they just kind of cataloged every character. And so he's kind of like making reference to that. And then he's talking about how he's going to break him. And then he tells him, but we're not even on a bridge. He's like, of course not. That would be too derivative. I'm going to fill this coaster with gas and then light it up. So your burning effigy does loop-de-loops. That's more my speed. So he's getting ready to do that. But then Kid Spectrum shows up and then they fight to subdue him again. So we can see this part where uh, Girl Power comes crashing in, takes him down. And then Kid Spectrum gets falcon out of his binds or whatever so again they like subdue him long enough and then he does this thing where he was going to try and stab kamala in the head but she has like super strong skin so he's like yeah i figured that was gonna happen so he has this ultra taser so he decides to use it and as you can see it literally only electrocutes him to which even she's like you had to know that wouldn't work and he's like, it was built for use against Nighthawk, not super strong lamos like you. And so we get this part where like the narrator is trying to do the thing where like saying, you know, oh, okay, yeah, they they won and everything went back to normal. They won the day Deadpool was taken away or whatever. He's like freaking out. He's like, now hold on a sec there, Mr. or Mrs. Narrator. You are not pulling that all is good in the universe shit here. No way. And then Kamala's like, who are you talking to? And the narrator's like, although Deadpool's mind was a shattered mess, with enough therapy and proper medication overseen by the well-trained staff at Ravencroft Asylum, he's like, no, 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 stop it. (laughs) So he's freaking out and he starts telling them this whole thing is a sham. It's a veneer of feel-good garbage piled on top of trauma and despair. And he's like, Falcon tries to tell him, like, you you tried to kill me. He's like, yeah, but for a good reason. And then Kid Spectrum asks him, why should we listen to you? You're a murderer. And he says, absolutely, which means I have nothing to hide. With Deadpool and Master Goblin, what you see is what you get. The truth at all costs, baby. And so this is where he tells him, these heroes you worship are not what they appear to be, and you know it. How many times have you seen the Squadron Supreme unleash violence because they enjoyed it? And that's where they kind of start to show these like flashbacks where Falcon was watching Nighthawk. And then Girl Power is watching Power Princess and he's like, horrific property damage because that's the only way they know how to win. And then he says, constant lethal force on targets in the name of peace. 
righteousness, and the American flag. Earth's mightiest scoundrels exert their power over all of us. They're a group of Avengers with nothing to avenge. So that's when all of a sudden Nighthawk comes up and he's like getting ready to take him away. And then he says, I heard you two were running around with that kid who thinks he's Falcon. Do you know where he is now? I, I want to help him. And they're just like, um, no, no, we haven't seen him, but we'll, we'll let you know if he shows up, which Deadpool is like, good answer. So he takes off with Deadpool and then girl power is like that look he gave us wasn't help. And kid spectrum was like, yeah, that was definitely, definitely. an I'm going to break Falcon's legs. Look. So all of a sudden Falcon shows up and is saying Deadpool's crazy, but he was right. We've all seen the squadron lose control and justify it afterward. And so they basically make the the plan that they have to go on being the example because they can't actually take down the squadron themselves. So they're just going to go on trying to be actual heroes and everything. And then Miles says that they can't call themselves the young squadron anymore. And then um, they should just be heroes or whatever. And then Kamala says, not just heroes, champions. And then, of course, Sam is like, you know, that name's not bad. So obviously alluding to the fact that they are the champions in the regular Marvel universe. But again, like I said, like this was a pretty good story overall, but, and especially because it did tie into like the greater storyline of Deadpool kind of like telling them like all of this crap you're seeing. Yeah. It's all made up. Like people are seeing what they, what they're wanting them to see. Like they aren't seeing like all of the dark depraved ways that the squadron is operating. And for whatever reason, they're just choosing to ignore it. So, I mean, in that way, it did kind of contribute into the overall storyline. So in that way, it did act, it's, it's relevant in that it did that. And then on top of that, it is a pretty good story. Like I said, the thing that's frustrating about it is this isn't just like brand new characters that they made, you know, for the hell of it. No, these are characters who already have their own established identities and none of them are going to take on these identities for real. It's not like Miles Morales is going to stop being Spider-Man now and start being the new Falcon. Sam Alexander is not going to be Kid Spectrum. He's going to go back to being Nova. And Kamala Khan is most definitely going not going to become girl power. Not when they have that series come out coming out where she's literally going to be Miss Marvel. So that's why I'm saying it's kind of annoying in that like this was a really good setup for a new team. But we got it with characters who already exist. So none of this actually means anything. It's all irrelevant in the grander scheme of things because once this whole like heroes reborn thing is done away with and they go back to like their actual continuity none of this like i said is actually going to carry over none of them will be taking on any of these actual personas so i mean none of this none of this mattered ultimately so and plus i just i never really did get behind like the designs here like they all just kind of look kind of goofy especially kid spectrums like, I just, I've never liked that design. It does not look good. But that's just my own personal opinion. So if you guys have read this, though, I would love to know what you think about it. What do you think of the ongoing storyline? Like I said, I'm doing a review on that one, too. So if I have that video up already, feel free to go and comment on that one, what you think of that story. But yeah, like I said, feel free to let me know what you thought about this one. And if you liked this video, then do like the video, share it with everyone you know, subscribe if you want to come back for more comic book reviews. And if you guys are done here, then go read a book. And if not, then I will see you on the next video.